Technique 35, props. This joke's gonna have you spinning. Why couldn't the bike stand on its own? Because it's too tired. <laughs> this technique is not the type of prop that you would use in a theater production or in a carrot top gag routine. These type of props are the kind of praise that teachers or fellow students give someone who volunteers to demonstrate an activity, to provide an answer, to walk you through the steps of an equation. Props, shout outs, ups, dap, whatever you call it, the praise for your students and the public praise needs to be harnessed. This can be a really effective routine in creating a more productive classroom environment. We want to praise excellence, and we also want to praise the types of virtues that we want to instill in our students. Think about the last time you received a round of applause, even if it was after the singing of the happy birthday song. Everybody responds to praise, to a crowd cheering for them and rooting them on. Never forget how important you can feel, even in a classroom. I mean, what better reward is there for trying a tough question? or for persevering, or finding your own mistake, or explaining to your peers how to solve a problem. Getting that public praise is the ultimate instant gratification. Building a culture that valorizes achievement and effort without sacrificing order or time on task is not easy. The key is investing the time at the outset to teach students to give props the right way, crisply, quickly, and enthusiastically. If you want your students to be consistent, you have to be consistent. So make sure that anytime someone volunteers or provides a, an opportunity for praise, you give praise. It's gotta be from cradle to the grave. Good props are quick. You should be able to cue it up in one second. If you say two claps for David and the response is any slower than that, take the time to teach your students to do it the right way by doing it again and doing it faster. The prop itself should be fast because you don't have time to waste and because there's nothing less energizing than an exhortation that starts strong but peters out. Be short so the energy level stays high. Props are usually better when they rely on movement and sound, especially percussive sound. Make sure your props involve movement and controlled noise. You might want to have them stomping their feet, clapping their hands, knocking on the desk. Something that gets them physically involved. Props are universal, without exception. When we want to apply something, everybody joins in. It's up to you to set and enforce this expectation. Props are the exclamation point, not the sentence. So keep the tone fun and lively. It should be a break, however brief and fun, from hard work. One easy way to increase students' enthusiasm is to let them choose the prop from among the various ones you've developed as a class. Building on their enthusiasm, you can let students suggest and develop ideas for props. They'll constantly renew the systems with fresh or funky ideas and will participate more vigorously because they helped invent them. But you've got to start somewhere. So here are six really good ideas that we've kind of stolen from other great teachers. The hitter is how a baseball player would admire a home run. Your kids pretend to toss a ball and swing a bat at it. They shield their eyes as if to glimpse its distant flight. Then they mimic the crowd noise for a home run, just for a second. So it would sound like, wow. In the lawnmower, you want to act as though you're turning over the engine. Your kids reach down to pull the cord, right, the one that starts the mower, and yank upwards twice. Ring, ring. Then they make the engine noises, grip the imaginary handles, and have a nice smile for a little bit. The roller coaster has your kids put their hands open and in front of them, pointing upwards at a 45 degree angle, palms down. They chug, chug, chug. Remember, only three times. These are supposed to be quick. With their hands mimicking a roller coaster, slugging its way up the last steep hill. That's what's chug, chug. Chug. Then they shout, whoop, 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 three times as their hands mimic a coaster shoo, speeding down over the top of the steep hill. 
This is the type of clap you'd see on a golf course. I call it the golf clap. Right? It's a one open hand, one open palm in your right hand or your left hand, and the opposite has only two fingers. And you give a short, silent, little golf clap. With a hot pepper, your kids hold up an imaginary hot pepper, dangling it above their mouths. They take a bite and make a sizzle sound. For exactly one second. Right? That was a hot take. That was a hot answer. You say two snaps and two stomps, or some variation of it, and your kids deliver the exact response. It's a real easy call and response. But the, the most important part is that everybody ends perfectly on cue. These techniques are all about rooting for your students. So however much enthusiasm or happiness you get out of it, remember your student is getting it doubly. Have fun and good luck.